Let's resume, guys. Yes, yes. Okay, sir. Let's resume. So we were discussing this definition of financial liability. I hope you are clear, absolutely clear till here, right? Debentures issued. Now I want to discuss a few important points with you as well. Let's say, for example, company issues, not debentures, but company issues own equity shares. Issues own equity shares, right? The company issues own equity shares. Under this, do they promise the holders that they will certainly receive dividends? No. Dividends will be paid only when there are profits in the company. Otherwise, they won't pay. Achha, do the company promise the shareholders that the principal will be repaid after a certain number of years? No. The principal, either the holders can recover by selling the shares or the company will repay the principal only upon liquidation. So, here there is no obligation on the company to deliver anything. Right, because the ones who invest in the equity shares of the company, they become the owners of the company. But I'm not talking from the point of view of investor. Now I'm talking from the point of view of the company who issues the equity shares. Right. So for the company who issues the equity shares, never call this a financial liability. It will always be a equity. It will always be a equity. That is why if you see. That is why if you see, whenever company issues equity shares, they are shown on the equity side. They are shown on the equity side of the balance sheet. See, in balance sheet, there are two sides. Asset side and the opposite is liability and equity side. So, asset side, there is only one thing, assets. Under the opposite side, there are equities also. There are liabilities also. Right. So, the equity share capital which is issued will not be shown under the liability side. First, it has to be liability. Then, we, have, we will think whether it is a financial liability or not. But when you issue equity shares, when you issue your own equity shares, for the issuer, it is an equity transaction. So it will come under equity share capital. Do you remember this point? So just remember, when you issue, please remember, always there are two parties to a transaction. I'm not talking from the point of view of the person who will buy the shares. I'm talking from the point of view of person who will issue the shares. For example, Reliance company issued shares. I bought the shares. I am the investor. I am not talking from the point of view of investor. I am talking from the point of view of the company who is issuing the shares. Okay. Yes. Kishan, I am not discussing about that. Kishan is saying that, sir. But when the application uh, money is paid, but no enrollment, then refund. I am not talking about that part. I am saying that the company issues shares. Right, the company will receive the money from the equity shareholders. What, uh, what will happen when the application money is to be refunded? That I'm not discussing. I'm discussing a basic equity share issue. Okay. Yeah. Because first we need to understand the basics now. Then we can discuss advanced things. First, if you think about the advanced things, then the basic won't get very much clear. Right. Okay. Anyways. So I guess you understood this. So remember when the company is issuing own equity shares, it is an equity transaction, not a financial liability. Okay, sir. Got this. Let's continue further. Point number eight. Let's say company issued convertible debentures. Convertible debentures issued. Convertible debentures issued. Okay. Again, talking from the point of view of issuer, the one who issues convertible debentures. Now, these are convertible debentures. Under convertible debentures, let's say company issued this debenture for a period of five years. Okay. So, company will have to pay interest. I am saying ignore this part as of now. Ignore the interest part. Ignore this. Sir, why? I will talk about this later on. Let's just talk about the principal part. When the company who issues convertible debentures, they have to repay the principal also. But because they are convertible, will the company give cash? No. What will the company give? Company will give equity shares. That also own equity shares. Let's say for example, Reliance company issued convertible debentures. So, when the principal repayment is to be done, Reliance will give their own equity shares to the holders. Reliance will give their own equity shares to the holders. Now let's evaluate whether giving equity shares, whether giving equity shares is a financial liability or not. We have to check this. Whether giving equity shares, whether issuing own equity shares is a financial liability or not. Let's check. Is there a contractual obligation to deliver cash? I already said ignore the interest part. Just talk about the principal. Is there a contractual obligation to deliver cash? No, sir. Because in principle, the company is not giving cash. Okay. Is there a contractual obligation to deliver any other financial asset? 
is there a contractual obligation to deliver any other financial asset? So you will say, yes, sir, giving equity shares can fall here. The answer is no. It will not fall under A2 also. It will not fall under A2 also. I'll tell you why. When we say contractual obligation to deliver any other financial asset, first see whether issuing own equity shares is a financial asset or not. Right? Whether giving your own shares is a financial asset or not. It is not a financial asset. Why? When will you say that you are going to, you have an obligation to, do, to give financial asset? When? What comes under financial asset? Now, this is a little deep discussion. Okay. So, I, I will have, you will have to give me a couple of minutes for you to understand this point. Okay. Just remember, whenever, whenever the company says financial asset, what all comprises of financial asset? Cash is a financial asset. Equity instruments of another entity is a financial asset. Equity instruments of another entity is a financial asset, right? When the Reliance says, when the Reliance company says, it is going to give own equity shares for against principal. When the Reliance, when the issuer says, they are going to give own equity shares, own giving own equity share is not cannot be treated like a financial asset. Giving own equity share cannot be treated like a financial asset. Why? any company cannot hold their own equity shares. They can only hold other company's shares. Sir, why? Do you remember buyback? We used to do buyback in Z-Enter. Whenever a company buybacks its own shares, they have to cancel them off within seven days. Why? Because the company is not allowed to hold its own shares because that will lead to insider trading. Right? Because the company will come to know whether it is performing good or not. So that will lead to insider trading. Right? So, don't ever say that issuing own equity shares is a financial asset. Why? Why? Because holding own shares is not allowed. So it cannot come under point number A2. You cannot say that under point number A2, we are saying contractual obligation to deliver any other financial asset. Giving your own equity share does not mean that you have an obligation to deliver financial asset. Own equity shares are not financial asset. So where will this point lie, sir? It is just like, can I say you are going to issue own equity shares? Can I say you are going to issue own equity shares, not directly, but in the principal repayment after five years. You are going to issue own equity shares, not directly, but after certain number of years against the principal repayment. So perfect answer, Supraja. This is not a financial liability. Just trying to explain you through this whole discussion that this is an equity transaction. That means from this, you should take one thing at home. That one thing is going to be whenever the company has to give own equity shares. I am talking from the point of view of giver, not from the point of view of holder. Not talking from the point of view of investor. I am talking from the point of view of issuer. Whenever the issuer has to give own equity shares, it can be a direct issue or it can be an issue under conversion. Whenever company has to give own equity shares, it is an equity transaction. Do remember this point. It is an equity transaction. So that means... If you look closely, so debenture will come under equity? So debenture will come under equity? Yes, it can. If they were normal debentures, normal, normal debentures, then they will be financial liability. If they are convertible debenture, then they are equity. Now remember a childhood. Childhood means your 11th, 12th foundation. Right? In childhood, what we used to read, read, we were thought that this is a balance sheet. Right? This is your, let's say, liability side. We were thought that this is your share capital. Under share capital, you will write equity share capital, preference share capital. Talking about AS. Childhood means AS. We were thought this. Right? This was your equity head. And then under the liabilities head, always there will be certain 10% debentures or something, something. But these rules have been broken down by NDS. NDS never says that preference are equity or debenture are liability. India says, look at the contract. If these debentures are convertible, these debentures are equity. Because ultimately, under conversion, you have to give own equity shares. If these debentures, if these debentures are normal debentures, normal debentures, this is a financial liability. Same discussion will be done also for preference shares. I will do it later on. Preference shares can also be a liability. They can also be equity. That means from now onwards, under NDS, if anyone will ask you whether debenture is a liability, so do not directly say yes or no. First ask him 
whether they are normal debentures or convertible debentures. If anyone will tell you that preference will 100% come in equity, tell them no. We will have to check the contract, whether it is a normal preference share or convertible preference share. So that means, sir, we were thought wrong things in AS. No, as per AS, this is correct. But as per India, this is not correct. So forget your childhood from today onwards. Whatever you were thought in AS was a myth. <laughs> in, day, in this financial instrument says Tata bye bye to all those concepts. Okay. Yeah. Understood, sir. Okay. Don't worry. If you understood this, I will also give you more examples just for clarification purpose. Don't worry about it. Okay. Chalo. Let's write certain more examples so that I can come to know. Achha, tell me one thing. Did you understand this first? Under principle, if you are giving own equity shares or just remember in liability, whenever you are giving own equity shares, not a liability, it is a equity. Simple. Okay. Chalo. Understood now? Great. Let's say we have convertible preference shares. Let's say we have convertible preference shares. Again, under preference, instead of interest, you give dividend. As of now, ignore this part. As of now, ignore the dividend. We don't know what dividend is. Because this is convertible, under principle, whenever the conversion happens, for principal company will give own equity shares. Now tell me, will it be a financial liability or equity? Or neither of them. Will it be a financial liability, normal liability or equity? Perfect answer, it will be a equity. I guess you have understood this very clearly. So I guess you have taken one thing from this. Whenever we want to issue an equity shares, it is an equity transaction. Simple. Very good. Right? <coughs> Guys, done now? Perfect. Chalo, take care. Achha, let's take the example further. Let's say the company issued normal preference shares. Let's say the company issued normal preference shares. Normal means they are not convertible. They are normal preference shares. Normal means the company who issued will have to give dividend in cash during the tenure. And the company who issued will also have to repay the principal in cash at the end of the tenure. Normal, you can say preference share issued. Tell me, where will this preference shares be classified? For dividend company will give cash. Preference shares means just like debenture only. Issuing an instrument to raise funds for a certain number of years. So dividend will be given in cash. Normal preference shares, the principal will also be given in cash. Very good, Ajay Supraja. Very good, everyone. It is. It will nothing but be a financial liability. As per point number A1. Why? Contractual obligation to deliver cash. Can you clearly see? Preference share can also be equity. Preference shares can also be FL, liability. Can you clearly see debenture can be liability, debenture can be equity also? Substance over form. Can you see the depth of index? Great, perfect. Chalo. So from now onwards, you know where to classify each and everything. Okay, Chalo. let's proceed further. 11th point. Let's say I have a trade payable. Let's say I have a trade payable. So normally, normally I give cash to trade payable. Normally I give cash to trade payable. But I said I don't, I will not give cash to him. I said I will give. I will give bills receivable to my trade payables. I will give bills receivable. That means to my financial liability, to my financial liability, I am in giving, giving a financial asset. Is this a financial asset? Yes. So that means I am giving a financial asset to my financial liability. I am giving a financial asset to my financial liability. So, am I giving cash? No. So there is no contractual obligation to deliver cash. No, I am not going to give cash. But there is an obligation to deliver any other financial asset. Is bills receivable a financial asset apart from cash? Yes, bills receivable is a financial asset. Bills is a financial asset, right? So I am giving my financial liability a financial asset. 
perfect answer then these trade receipt trade payables will be financial liability as per point number 82 so when you are going to give your financial liability not cash but any other financial asset still this trade receivable will fall under the head of financial liability only but as per point number 82 just for an example just remember this not very important not very important means not very uh, critical from uh, exam testability point of view but yes we should know each and every example of each and every point that is more important okay i guess you understood this let's proceed 12th like in financial asset we had income tax refund here we have income tax payable tell me whether a financial liability or not now you should be able to tell me this income tax payable whether it is a financial liability or not very good answer guys never say it is a financial liability or not just say it is a not a contractual but a statutory obligation so we can simply say now not in scope of financial instruments this is not in scope of financial instrument very good answer yes Achha. one more thing 13 point let's suppose you have any provisions provisions for gratuity provision for bad debts or any other provision provisions provision for bad debts gratuity any other provision if you have if you have any kinds of provisions these are also out of scope these are covered under india's 37 right so again not a financial liability also under provision there is no contractual obligation to deliver anything okay so these are not a financial liability covered under india 37 just remember this point 14th point one more thing was there security deposit accepted now what is the meaning of the point accepted sir accepted simply means see for example when a tenant gives deposit to the owner there are two parties now so for the giver it is a secure deposit given a financial asset for the owner who is receiving that deposit on day one it is a liability for him tell me whether it is a financial liability for him or not for this owner who is accepting the deposit for that owner who is accepting the deposit it is a liability but tell me whether it is a financial liability or not. Whether it is a financial liability or not. Perfect answer. Yes, it is a financial liability. Why? Because the owner who is accepting the deposit on day one will have to refund the same at the end of the contract. Na? Will have to refund the same at the end of the contract. So contractual obligation to deliver cash. Very good. Yes. For the giver, if it was a financial asset, <laughs> for the receiver on day one, it will be a financial liability. Na, baba. It is so obvious. So I guess these many examples are more than sufficient for you to understand this point of financial liability. To understand this point of financial liability. Right? Achha. I have thought to you what is financial asset. I have thought to you what is financial liability. And inherently, I also thought to you what is equity. So what is equity, sir? Whenever the company whenever the issuer is going to give its own equity shares by way of new issue under conversion whenever they are going to give own equity shares let's say for example bb virtuals bb virtual is going to give equity shares to the professors so for bb virtual such issue of equity shares is a equity transaction so whenever a company is giving its own equity shares it is not a liability it is a equity transaction right again i am telling that i am not talking from the point of view of the person who is receiving the shares. Huh? I am talking from the point of view the person who is issuing the shares. For the receiver, it is an equity instrument of another entity. It is a financial asset for the receiver. For the giver, it is an issue of own equity shares. Nah? So it is equity transaction. So for OFU purpose, I will make you write something. You can write OFU. Because the formal definition I will give later on for equity. Just write OFU. Own equity shares. Own equity shares deliver. It is an equity transaction. When you are going to deliver own equity shares, <coughs> it is an equity. Right? Done, sir. We are done till here. Okay? Chalo. Again, financial liability. 
giving you a couple of minutes even the recorded ones you will pause and read the live ones again giving a couple of minutes you will have to read the definition i know point number b and c are pending that is fine read the definition and read the examples okay time starts now giving a couple of minutes if you have any query you can ask me perfect start done reading guys okay now let me introduce to a new concept and that is compound financial instruments what is the name sir compound financial instruments so what is this compound financial instrument don't worry wait have some patience in hindi we say ruko jara sabar karo that means wait have some patience right just give the heading compound financial instruments now this is going to get very interesting now let's assume what is the meaning of this just leave two lines here and let's discuss one uh, instrument let's say we have a debenture now please remember i am talking from the point of view of issuer issuer means the company who is raising the funds so either for the issuer it will be a liability or equity it cannot be asset for the issuer right either it will be a liability or equity if it is a liability then it will be either a normal liability or financial liability right that is what we are checking now <coughs> so let's say there is a debenture so debenture are of two types one is a normal debenture where you raise the funds interest repayment has to be done in cash principal repayment has to be done in cash that is known as redeemable debenture that is known as redeemable debenture so under redeemable debenture it means normal debenture you raise the funds on day one you make the interest payment in cash every year you make the principal payment in cash every year right so here the interest payment will be done in cash so is it a financial liability yes sir acha what about principal payment will it be done in cash yes sir so will it be a financial liability yes sir contractual obligation to deliver cash okay okay sir simple so this is a redeemable prefer debenture as we say the second kind of debenture is convertible debenture and just to be very clear it is a compulsory convertible debenture that means against principle compulsorily the company will issue own equity shares the company will issue own equity shares against principle but every instrument has two kinds of repayment even in the convertible debenture case company has to make the interest payment no suppose the company issued convertible debenture for 5 years so during these 5 years the company will make the interest repayment this interest repayment will be done in cash only will be done in cash only so tell me when the company will give cash against the interest payment delivering your obligation to deliver cash is a financial liability yes sir it is a financial liability but under principle under principal payment is the company going to give cash the answer is no because it is a convertible instrument company will give own equity shares company will give own equity shares this principal part of the instrument will it be a financial liability or will it be a equity time starts now please answer again asking this principal part of the instrument where you are going to give own equity shares where you are going to give own equity shares will this be a financial liability or will this be equity perfect answer sir this will be a equity because before and only you told whenever the company is going to issue own equity shares directly or under conversion they are known as equity so the principal part of this instrument is going to be equity very good answer now can you see a single instrument has one part as financial liability and one part as equity has one part as financial liability there is a single instrument single instrument has two parts interest and principal 
the interest part of this same instrument is FL and the principal part of this same instrument is equity. Whenever an instrument has both components FL and equity in a single item, whenever a single instrument has both components FL and equity, such instrument are known as compound financial instrument. In short, I can call them as CFI, compound financial instrument. So what is the meaning of compound financial instrument, sir? A instrument where, a single instrument where it has both the elements, element of FL and element of equity. Both tadkas are there in this. When you have both the crackers, both the patakas, patakas mean crackers, both crackers, FL cracker and equity cracker both. Cracker means patakas, you know? okay. fire crackers. So when you have both the elements, it is known as CFI. Achha, tell me one thing. That means this con compulsory convertible instrument was a CFI. Because interest was FL, principal was equity. Tell me this one. This instrument, redeemable instrument. Where the interest was also made in cash, principal payment was also made in cash. Is this a CFI? Is this instrument a CFI? Yes or no? That is my question. Is this instrument a CFI? Perfect answer. The answer is no. Na? Because when will you call it a CFI? When it has both elements, FL and equity elements both. Now I can define CFI. What is the meaning of CFI? It means a single instrument which has FL plus equity. A single instrument which has FL plus equity. <coughs> right guys? Yes. So understood this. Simple. Simple, simple. Simple, simple. Claps for me. Yeah. Chalo. To make things more, to un make you understand things more in a much better way. Chalo. Let me give you one more example. Let's say we have preference shares. Let's say we have preference shares. Similar discussion can be done for preference shares also. Okay. So let's say we have preference shares. They can be of two types. Either they are redeemable or either they are convertible. Under convertible also, compulsory convertible. Achha. In preference shares, if they are redeemable, you will give dividend. Instead of interest, we give dividend. Achha. One thing, in, deben in case of debenture, the interest payment is mandatory for the company raising the funds. They have to make the interest payment. What about preference share? Is the dividend mandatory? So if you will say yes, sir. No, it depends on the contract between the issuer and the investor. Dividends can be discretionary also. They can be mandatory also. Right? So I will just write it down. Dividends can be discretionary also. Discretionary means if the company have the funds, they have the relevant profits, then only they will give. Otherwise, it can be mandatory also. Sir, how we will come to know in exam? In exam, if nothing is mentioned, we will always assume it to be mandatory. Assume this if nothing mentioned. If nothing is mentioned, of course, we will assume it to be mandatory. No? If it is discretionary, it will be specifically mentioned. Okay, because preferential is the, such of a nature where the company raises funds and they are, they are giving dividend at a fixed rate. So nothing is mentioned, you will assume mandatory. But if it specifically says it, it was discretionary, okay then. Okay. But what if it was discretionary, sir? So when the dividend is discretionary, that means the company will pay only when they have funds, only when they have profits. So when the dividends are discretionary, can I say there is no obligation on the company to pay the dividend? Because when we talk about financial liability, when we talk about financial liability, financial liability clearly says there should be an obligation to deliver cash. When the dividends are discretionary, can I say the obligation is avoided? There is no obligation because we will distribute the dividend only when we have profit. We will distribute the dividend only when we have profit. So the obligation is no more valid in this case. So just write in the brackets, when the dividend is discretionary, there is no obligation. So just write, we will distribute, we will distribute 
only if company earns profits we will distribute only if company earns profits so very good answer supraja in this case it is not a financial liability then what will it be called we will discuss that later on but when the dividend is mandatory of course the payment of dividend will be a financial liability because when it is mandatory you will pay in cash so of course it is a financial liability okay just to be clear in maximum questions when nothing is mentioned always assume it to be mandatory this is just for clarification purpose by chance if in one or two questions you see that it is not mandatory it is written specifically that is a discretionary then we will say it is not a financial liability that we will discuss in the question only as of now forget you can forget this as now just remember dividend is mandatory okay so mandatory dividend financial liability and now because the instrument because the instrument is redeemable because the instrument is redeemable so principal also has to be paid in cash so the principal payment will also be has to be made in cash so interest in cash principal in cash so fl so of course if both the elements are fl then it is not normal instrument not a not a cfi it is a normal instrument because both the elements are fl i am forgetting this part as of now okay okay let's come towards the second part this one <coughs> let's come here where we say the preference shares are convertible but compulsory convertible now now let's see how much you have understood i will come to know from here only when they are compulsory convertible still the company will have to make the dividend payment which is of course mandatory the for principal because it is compulsory convertible you you guys all know now the company will give own equity shares for principal but for dividend mandatory payment has to be made in cash answer both these elements and tell me whether this is a cfi or not cfi yes or no tell me this time starts now convertible i gave you maximum hints okay dividend is mandatory that is that means during the tenure of the instrument you have to give cash for dividend right and principal because it is compulsory convertible under principal the company will give own equity shares tell me very good answer everyone this dividend element will be fl this principal element will be equity so if in single instrument you have fl as well as equity then it is a cfi very good answer guys highly impressed very good chalo let's proceed let's proceed further sir okay let's proceed further chalo let's do some more advanced discussion as of now let's say again i'm talking from the point of view of issuer again talking from the point of view of issuer let's say now we have a debenture we have a debenture which is convertible okay just to be clear it is convertible debenture now under convertible debenture it is not compulsory convertible the conversion is optional the conversion is optional who has the option sir let's assume see we are issuer okay we are the issuer of this debenture <coughs> conversion is optional let's take two cases first case conversion at the option of the holder the holder will decide whether the holder wants to convert it into cash or the holder wants equity share for the same okay holder will decide unlike the previous case where it was compulsory convertible no it is not compulsory convertible the holder holder means who the investor investor will decide whether during the principal repayment he wants cash or he wants shares and he will decide at the end of the tenure not today on day one he won't tell his uh, preference he will tell the preference after 5 uh, years let's say so conversion is at the option of the holder now the question is the simple part interest has to be paid in cash this element will be fl everyone knows this this element will be fl everyone knows this what about the principal component we have to define the principal component on day one but on day one we don't know what the holder will choose on day one we don't know what the holder will choose see we want to tell the financials on day one itself whether this principal will be fl or equity 
if the principal will be redeemed in cash it will be fl if it will be redeemed in equity shares it will be equity but on day one we don't know now what the holder will choose tell me how do we classify this principal now for this issue what the standard says is you are the issuer right can the issuer at its own will avoid paying cash that is my question can the issuer at its own will avoid paying cash can the issuer refuse the holder to pay cash if the holder demands for it if the holder demands for cash holder can demand anything holder can demand cash also holder can demand shares also but that is not the case we don't know what he will demand but the question is can the issuer refuse to pay cash if the holder demands for it the answer is no issuer at its own will cannot avoid paying cash if the issue if the holder says i want cash issuer will have to give cash if the holder says he wants shares issuer will have to give shares that is fine but can the issuer refuse to pay cash if holder wants it the answer is no that means you as a issuer have an obligation to deliver cash you as an issuer have an obligation to deliver cash i will just write this down under principle i will write issuer at its own will cannot avoid paying cash so you will treat this like a financial liability irrespective of what the holder might ask at the end we don't know what he might ask at the end of 5 years but on day 1 we have to define it as a equity or fl you will call this as a fl because you are the issuer you don't have the option to refuse you don't have the option to refuse to pay cash so it will be a fl for you if you want to understand this in a better way let's suppose this issuer is a husband okay i will give you a example which is relatable to you suppose this issuer is a husband or a boyfriend and this holder is a wife now tell me one thing if the wife says she wants to go to shopping can the husband refuse the answer is no that means husband has a liability financial liability see wife can refuse wife can herself say that she doesn't feel like going to shopping that is husband's benefit that is fine but if the wife says that she wants to go for shopping can the husband refuse the answer is no sir that means husband will always have a financial liability wife of course at a later stage might refuse that is fine that is option with the wife but can the husband refuse the answer is no issuer is like husband if he cannot refuse it is a financial liability for him understood sir chalo let's proceed further Ah, now we understood, sir. Huh? <laughs> conversion. Now, if what if the conversion was the conversion option was with the issuer, conversion at the option of the issuer. Now, issuer himself, husband himself, has the option to refuse. Ah, acha. Tell me one thing. Interest, of course, has to be paid in cash. There is no option here. It is FL. Now, I'll talk about principal. i'll talk about principal right again i'll ask the same question issuer has the option of conversion that means issuer will decide whether he wants to pay cash or equity shares he will decide at the end of the tenure on day one we don't know what he will pay but today if i if we ask the issuer can the issuer at its own will avoid the cash payment he can pay cash he can pay shares that is fine he can give shares but can the issuer at its own will avoid paying cash here when the option is with the issuer when the option of going to shopping is with the husband can the husband at its own will refuse yes sir he can refuse if the principal he can refuse na yaar can i say issuer here husband will definitely refuse <laughs> can the issuer at its own will here here yes issuer at its own will i can say can avoid can avoid paying cash can avoid paying cash so you will call this when the cash is avoidable it is not a financial liability anymore so it will be a equity again just to clarify what will actually happen we don't know on day 1 that we will come to know at the end of 5th year so sir what we will do at that time not to be discussed now but we have to make this classification on day 1 we have to tell them on day 1 
whether it is a FL or whether this is a equity, right? So just remember when we are talking from the point of view of issuer, let me simplify things for you. When we are talking from the point of view of issuer, if issuer has the option, then it is not a liability for him. But if issuer does not have the option, it is a liability for him. Simple. Talking only from the point of view of issuer. Okay. So of course, in the second case, the instrument has FL and equity both components. So it will be a CFI. But in the first case, because both the components were FL only. So will it be called as a CFI? The answer is no. The answer is no. Same logic, you can say same logic for preference as well. In preference also, same logic. If it is a conversion, convertible preference share, see option is with whom. Okay, same logic I will write for preference share. Okay, yes. If you have understood this, you have written this. Okay, I will take a oral test now. Okay, you will not write anything. You will just answer me. Just keep your hand on the chat box. Recorded once, you just answer it in your mind or on the paper. What is it? Okay. Taking an oral test for you guys. Time starts now. Okay. Just tell me. For example, there is a redeemable debenture. I want to know whether it is a CFI or not. CFI or not. I have a redeemable debenture. Of course, I am talking only from the point of view of issuer. Talking only from the point of view of issuer, asking you whether it is a CFI or not. Time starts now, please answer. Talking from the point of view of issuer, whether it is a CFI or not. Perfect answer. It is not a CFI. Not a CFI. Why? Always to check, just evaluate. How will you value? <coughs> Redeemable debenture. Interest to be paid in cash. So it is a FL. Principal redeemable hai, to principal to be paid in cash again FL not a CFI very good answer guys this is how we will do the oral test okay okay there is a let's say preference share okay in case of preference always assume dividend to be mandatory if mentioned otherwise okay so dividend mandatory hai. preference share is there convertible okay it is compulsory convertible just to be clear compulsory convertible tell me whether CFI or not Preference share is there. Compulsory convertible. Whether it is a CFI or not. Assuming dividend is, dis uh, dividend is mandatory. Okay. Mandatory dividend. CFI or not. Very good answer. It is a CFI. How come sir? Because dividend. Assume mandatory. FL. Principal. It is compulsory convertible. So no question of who has the option. Compulsory convertible. Issue own equity shares. Yes. CFI. Thoda FL. Thoda equity. Little FL. Little equity. CFI. Okay. Assume there is a debenture or preference share any of it. It is convertible. Who has the option? Convertible at the option of the holder. Convertible at the option of the holder. Again, I am telling, I am saying, I am talking in the books of issuer. How will issuer classify this? Debenture is convertible, convertible at the option of the holder. Tell me CFI or not. Tell me CFI or not. Very good answer. This is not a CFI. Sir, why? Why? Interest is FL. Principal. Holder has the option. Whether this person, this issuer, at its own will, can he avoid paying cash? The answer is no. That means if he, if the issuer cannot avoid him paying cash, for issuer it is FL only. Issuer will always treat like the holder will demand cash and he cannot refuse at its own will. So both FL, not a CFI. Achha. Debenture. Convertible. Option of the issuer. Issuer has the option. Issuer has the option of conversion of debentures. Debentures are convertible. Issuer has the option. Tell me. Whether will it be a CFI or not? Very good answer. It will be a CFI. Why? When issuer has the option, the interest has to be FL. But the principal, can the issuer at its own will avoid paying cash? Yes, issuer can, himself can refuse to pay cash, right? So when the issue, when the cash payment is avoidable at the option of the issuer, there is no obligation. So if no obligation, then you will treat as equity. So, done with the oral test? Yes. Not very relevant. No need to write this. This is just already written above by you. 
last point i will discuss just take a couple of minutes and then we can wrap up the session okay last point i'm discussing cfi concept we discussed from whose point of view we discussed only from uh, issuers point of view let's discuss from the holders point of view holder means the investor the investor who buys such convertible instruments okay let's say for example there is one holder mr ajay he is the holder of the instrument okay he invested in which company shares let's say he invested in compulsory compulsory convertible debentures of reliance company limited he invested mr ajay invested in compulsory convertible debentures of reliance company limited now i want to know whether this instrument for holder will be a cfi or not let's see did you understand i am talking from investors point of view now see i was discussing now from issuers point of view this whole instrument similar instrument similar compulsory convertible dementia now i am discussing from the point of view of issuer what will be issuer receive one he will receive interest interest he will receive in cash okay so this is a for issuer it is not a financial it is a financial asset as per point number c1 do you remember contractual right to receive cash okay and he will receive the principal in what form compulsory convertible so he will receive equity shares for principal he will receive equity shares of reliance because reliance will give na reliance will say i am converting my debentures so i will give my own shares so for ajay he is receiving equity shares of reliance in principal for ajay he is receiving equity shares of reliance in principal how will this principal be classified by ajay how will this principal be classified by ajay don't rush through things read it very read it very carefully in principal ajay is entitled to receive equity shares of another entity so please don't make the mistake of calling this equity like a hucha are for investor there is no equity for investor it is always be a normal asset or financial asset so for investor is it a financial asset the answer is yes how can i say for the investor just read the definition now for the investor under principal he has a contractual right to receive equity instruments of another entity na very good answer super ajab kishan ajay very good under principal he has a see for interest he has a contractual right to receive cash c1 financial asset for principal he has a contractual right to receive equity shares of another entity for ajay reliance is another entity na right so for holder for holder even receiving equity shares is a financial asset even receiving equity shares is a financial asset for whom for the holder that means that means what i am telling you is the same instrument if i was talking from the point of view of reliance it was a cfi for reliance for the issuer it was a cfi why interest in cash fl principal in own equity shares equity so for the issuer it might be a cfi for holder there is no concept of cfi for holder there is no concept of cfi for holder either it is a financial asset or a normal asset because in the asset side there is no equity in column na in the asset there is only normal assets or financial asset in the in the opposite side we have equity and liabilities na so the concept of cfi can only persist from the point of view of issuer there is no cfi from the point of view of holder because for holder it will always be a financial asset can you feel this concept problem what i'm telling you maximum students even after studying financial instruments for five times they don't know this concept they don't know this that this concept of cfi can only be from the point of view of issuer so i will make you write this now can you feel this tell me yes or no quickly yes so let's write this na note compound financial instrument i will say only applicable only applicable from the point of view of issuer 
फ्रॉम द पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ऑफ इशूवर ओनली एप्लीकेबल फ्रॉम द पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ऑफ इशूवर ओके जस्ट राइट बिलो फॉर होल्डर फॉर होल्डर देर इज नो कंसेप्ट ऑफ सी एफ आई फॉर होल्डर ओनली फाइनेंशियल असेट very good question very good for holder only financial asset this is the level of clarity you will be getting in this whole chapter it is going to be very easy i'm telling you it is very easy just be patient to complete the full chapter with me we will take a, a nice number of days but that is fine we will do it very nicely can you feel this <coughs> see again i'll repeat this compulsory convertible instrument when the when we were talking about issuer for issuer interest was in cash principal was in equity so we is told cfi but for the investor he will receive cash he will receive shares of another company receiving shares of another company is also financial asset receiving cash also financial asset unlike issuer that is why okay so just write this you will don't worry you will understand once you revise everything okay so let's revise everything once quickly and then we can wrap up the session okay chalo so let's start the revision in 3 2 1 and go first of all we started with the chapter of financial instruments which has three indices 32 101107 okay we discussed the definition of financial asset there are mostly we discussed only a b c d is pending we will discuss it tomorrow a says cash if you have cash financial asset if you have equity instruments of another entity financial asset if you have a contractual right to receive cash financial asset if you have a contractual right to receive equity shares of another entity or if you have a contractual right to receive any other financial asset do you remember c3 also we discussed when the trade receivable will give us bills receivable so it is contractual right to receive any other financial asset so covered here itself examples we discussed then we discuss for financial liability b and c point we will discuss tomorrow a we discussed a1 contractual obligation to deliver cash or contractual obligation to deliver any other financial asset is a financial liability also remember when you have a obligation to deliver own equity shares it is not a fl it is a equity right okay last point was compound financial instrument and instrument where you have both the elements fl element as well as the equity element right so let's say for example you have a debenture if it is redeemable both elements will be fl it is not a cfi if it is compulsory convertible then the interest element is fl but the principal element is equity because you are going to give own equity shares compulsory convertible so this, now this is a cfi same is the case with preference shares in just in preference just see whether dividend is mandatory or discretionary if mandatory then normal logic applies if discretionary then you will not treat it as not treated as a financial liability okay yes and the last point if the debenture is convertible then just see who has the option of conversion just see who has the option of conversion if the conversion option is with the holder if the holder has the conversion option in that case the issuer at its own will cannot avoid paying cash right so it will be both elements will be financial liability but if the conversion option is with the issuer if the conversion option is with the issuer then issuer at its own will can avoid paying cash so the principal will be a equity element okay then it will become a cfi the last point cfi element is only from the only from the issuer's point of view for holder it will always be a financial asset with that we, with this we wrap up the session i hope you enjoyed this session just one request whenever you come tomorrow please revise and come if you are not revising tomorrow's lecture you won't be able to understand you have to have to have to revise it and i will make sure you will revise it each and every day okay so just the first part just give a whole overview revision it will hardly take 10 to 15 minutes just give that revision and then see how smoothly this whole chapter goes okay so with that thank you so much i will wrap up the session bye bye everyone take care see you all bye bye see you